Hey everybody, today we're talking about interviews. So as a classroom teacher, I didn't do very many interviews of other teachers. And, and looking back, I really wish I would have. I really wish someone would have asked me in my master's program or doctoral program to interview someone who had a job that I wanted or who um, was morally knowledgeable about an issue that was of importance to me in my classroom or someone to talk to who was like a practicing teacher doing something that I would be doing eventually so that I could get some really like behind the scenes, authentic, firsthand uh, knowledge about something that I was learning in the classroom in a master's program. So I didn't really have to do any of those interviews and I wish I did. So when I, now that I teach uh, teacher education classes, I have uh, several assignments where students, uh, pre-service teachers, will interview in-service teachers and ask them their firsthand experiences of something that we're doing in the classroom. And this was related to young adult literature and choosing books and having a classroom library, about writing practices and things that they wish they knew, and about developing a unit, like how do you unit plan and how much freedom do you have? So that was one, one way and one reason why the interviewing was really important is to get that firsthand experience beyond your course instructor as well. And the benefit of that when everyone's doing interviews is that they can share what they heard from uh, many different teachers across the country or in our state. So we have this assignment where our uh, pre-service teachers, our classes are interviewing a variety of teachers from sixth grade to 12th grade about their unit planning. And together we can find out what are the trends and themes and issues, tensions, joys, decision-making that has to happen. I can talk about that from my experience. I can find a chapter that has that uh, that we could read together, but it's not quite the same as talking to living teachers today in the sociopolitical context right now. What are they doing? So the interviews are great for that. As a doctoral student, we have to do interviews for research or as a practicing, you know, as a, a researcher in a higher education, assistant, associate professor, full professor, we might do qualitative research. And so we're interviewing teachers or interviewing students or practitioners or teacher educators, anybody interested that we're interested in studying and getting their firsthand experience, we're interviewing them um, to again, find out their, their personal perspectives, their stories, the issues, tensions, joys that they face in whatever topic we're trying to uncover and learn more about. And so for me, around COVID-19, we launched this, um, this project, this oral history project of finding out what teachers' experiences really were. At the time, we were writing a lot of poetry together, and the poetry was around our experiences as teachers during COVID-19 or during the pandemic. So we collected all these interviews, and we've archived them. So now we have first-hand experience of a variety of teachers, so we can look at trends and issues. So I've done a lot of interviewing, a lot of qualitative studies of teachers, uh, for a variety of projects, and I'm really excited to share um, a few tips for you interviewing a teacher for your assignment or for your study, and there's a few things that we need to look at, so let's dive in and start looking at some of those. All right, so we're going to talk about conducting an interview with teachers. This is a step-by-step -step guide. It's for English Language Arts Methods course that has this um, interview assignment, and it also could be for any research studies that you might be doing. Um, so let's jump into it. So the first thing is understanding the objective of the assignment or the research protocol that you're about to do. So for us, um, this project is part of an English language arts methods course, and we're trying to gain insights into English language arts unit planning through the teacher interviews for firsthand perspectives from this. And we wanna understand the decision-making process and the challenges and the strategies that the teachers use when designing a unit and to what extent they have freedom to do that. Um, so, for us, they are pre-service teachers in the English language arts course, and we're researching in-service teachers who are already teaching in the field. Um, if you are a researcher, you might be conducting a qualitative study in education and interviewing teachers for that purpose. And you might be interviewing pre-service teachers or practicing teachers or veteran teachers, whatever sort of category of that. But holding on to the objective of your study is really important. So you might have research questions that you're working with. 
The next is selecting your participants or selecting a teacher. For our purposes, we did, uh, we used our personal contacts to reach out to teachers that we knew who are in grades, um, teaching grades fifth through 12th, because in Oklahoma, that's the secondary certification, grades five through 12. Uh, other states might have a different range for secondary, or just, you might want to just focus on high school. Um, nine through 12 is typically in Oklahoma. Um, so you want to think about how you're going to find the teachers um, that you're going to be working with. And that could be sending out uh, a, recruit in fl a recruitment flyer through social media or sending a broad email to any of your personal contacts. Do you know somebody who? Um, or as a snowball, a snowball approach is saying, I've invited you. Now, will you tell others or recommend other people who I might reach out to? Um, those are ways of gathering participants for your study or for an assignment like this. Um, let's see. The key other thing is when you're thinking about um, inviting a teacher to do the interview or selecting a teacher is that they understand what the purpose is. If it's for a qualitative study um, or if it is for a classroom assignment, where all the information is really just for instructional purposes and um, or how the information will be used and if they're comfortable being recorded so that we can look at a transcript or um, other people can see and hear some of the things that you found out in your uh, interview. So you might have like a team of researchers or in our case, a class. The next is crafting a professional invitation to participate in the study or to participate in the assignment. Um, and so for this, you want to just introduce who you are, invite them to participate, tell them the purpose and the format of the interview. How long is it going to be? Um, what's the, the process for scheduling the interview and how is the interview going to be conducted in person or online? Uh, and so I have a sample script here that you might pause your screen and read or modify in some way, but it's, you know, I think it maybe should be even a little bit shorter. It'd be great if you had a line in there, like, will you like to be interviewed? Yes or no? Kind of reminds me of middle school. Just, we just want to know if you like us. Click yes, check no, that's it. Um, and we wanted to make it very easy for them to say yes, if this is something that they're willing to do. So 30 minutes, interviewed, recorded for transcripts. This is why we're doing it. I'm really interested in hearing your experience. We really um, think that you have a lot to offer to help us understand things better. I think anybody wanting to be interviewed wants to know that they're valued and that they're appreciated and that they have something worth sharing. So the more you can kind of like boost up the teacher and let them know that this is out of respect, that we want to interview them and it's really going to benefit us, I think it's more likely that they'll say yes because they know it's worth their time. So you want to develop a list of supportive questions, which I think is really um, uh, like kind of scaffolded questions that ease the person in. Remember, you're talking to a human being who is super busy and a teacher who has a lot going on and you don't know really the things that are happening in their personal life. So this is a moment that they get to interact with you and they get to help you understand what it means to be a teacher. And so we want to make sure that they feel appreciated and special and that they're eased into it so it doesn't feel like a drive by. Um, so a little warm up. How are you? What was the highlight of your day? And then like easing into like, tell me about your teaching. Like what grades do you teach? Where are you? You know, why did you choose this grade? A little bit of that kind of easing into it. And then you can move into um, the questions that are related to your research questions or the purpose for your interview. You know, uh, I like open ended questions to get them to talk and then you just are listening, maybe taking uh, since it's being recorded, you can just really attend to them. You don't have to take notes because it's going to be recorded unless something kind of sparks an idea for you that you don't want to forget. You could write that down, but you want to really attend to them so that they know that you're with them when they're responding. But I love this, like walk me through a favorite unit. Tell me about um a successful unit. Tell me about one that maybe didn't go so well. How did you respond? Um, do you, to what degree do you have freedom or who makes the decisions? Like talk me through how that works, um, things like that. So there's some questions in here that you might look at, but in general, you wanna keep it open-ended and quite flexible and in really focusing on holding on to the reason that you're having this conversation to begin with. Um, and also making sure that you're attending to the teacher so that they feel heard and respected. So as you're conducting the interview or as you're pre preparing for it, um, just to go back a little bit, you want to make sure you um, confirm the date and time, the morning of, 
Um, any, you know, it's not insulting to send a reminder. I think everybody can benefit from that, especially this interview is probably out of their routine of things that they typically do, right? Um, set up your recording tools if you have Otter or if you're using Zoom. Maybe you're not recording on Zoom, but you're going to use it to communicate or some kind of phone app. You want to check it, make sure it works, make sure you don't have any uh, um, updates that you need to do that might take long or delay the interview start time. Um, also, it's nice to have a backup in case a device doesn't work. You have a backup device. Um, during the interview, keep it open. Be curious. Uh, again, be flexible. Don't feel like I have to ask this question or I have a script and if I don't do the script, I'm going to get in trouble. That's like a lot of stress and really we want the, the participant, the interviewee to feel comfortable. And it's not about like racing through the questions. It's mostly honoring their 30 minutes getting what you can in the 30 minutes, attending to what they have to say, and you know maybe leaving some time at the end to say, is there anything I haven't asked you about? Is there anything that you feel is really important that I haven't asked or anything else you wanna say about teaching or about unit planning? And sometimes that last piece, they might wanna go on for five or 10 minutes. So I will leave a good amount of time for the closing of that interview. Um, here is a little uh, script about starting the interview. I've kind of added this in because I think it's awkward, <laughs> frankly. I've done a lot of interviews and once you finally get there, yes, you're there, you're on the space, you're ready to do the interview. Um, you have your questions, everything's ready. You combed your hair, you look nice. Um, it does okay if you don't smell good because they can't smell you if it's not in person. <laughs> um, and even if it is in person, I mean, you should shower and take care of yourself, of course. But you can have this script here to help you because it might be awkward getting started. Um, so, the, you know, just when you meet them for the first time, introducing yourself, how are you, how's your day been going, that's kind of the warm-up questions. Um, and give it, here's a quick overview. Once again, I'm doing this interview for this reason. It's going to be 30 minutes. Um, thank you so much for doing this. It's really going to help me prepare to be a teacher or help me understand this question I'm wondering about. Um, you know, is it okay if I record this? Are you ready for this? I can stop the recording at any time. But it's nice just to have this sort of um, script to get started. Otherwise, you might be like, okay, let's just start. Uh, where you haven't even kind of warmed up about like what you're doing and who you are one more time. Because maybe the last time you emailed each other was like weeks or months ago, right? Uh, okay, if you have an IRB, if this is for a research study that you're going to publish that you want to like write an article about or do a presentation about, um, or you're trying to like generalize some of your findings, you have already had an IRB, which has some an informed consent process to making sure that the person you're interviewing knows their rights, knows their risks, knows their benefits, whether or not they're going to get paid, how you're going to be protecting their identity, if they want their identity to be protected, if they need a pseudonym um, that they can stop or withdraw at any time. All of these things are part of the um, uh, human working with human subjects uh, for your research. Uh, so a confidentiality is important to address and the data use, how you're going to use it. So if you record it, audio or video file, as soon as it's transcribed using a pseudonym, you're going to delete the audio and video file once the transcription has been checked because you don't need to keep those things if you're trying to protect their identity once you've used a pseudonym in your transcription. So there's lots of different protocols to consider. So again, hopefully you're getting a research class that can help you make about make these decisions way before you're do, actually doing the interviews and you have IRB approval. But I just want to talk a little bit about that in case that is what you're watching this video for. Okay, uh, when it comes to recording and transcribing, we like, I like to use Otter, it's an automatic transcription service, it's password protected. Sometimes Zoom will do a transcript for you too. In both cases, you wanna then listen to the recording and check the transcription to make sure that it's accurate. Um, make sure you have high quality audio, so check that ahead of time. And again, check, make sure you have an IRB and that you've explained to them the devices that you're going to use and where you're going to store the data in a password protected file like OneDrive um, or D Dropbox or something like that. Where are things going to be stored if it's for IRB? Again, make sure you get explicit consent for recording um, and that also um, explicit for consent for the transcription that you're going to transcribe it and then use that to do some analysis. 
Um, finally, you want to make sure that you, um, after the interview, the next day or something that you show uh, your gratitude by sending a thank you letter. Yes, a little thank you email, um, appreciating the teacher for their time and their compassion and for their insights. It's helpful to even say if there's something in particular that like you really held on to and really benefited from. It's nice the teacher will feel, again, appreciated and validated with their by spending that time with you. I think it's really great. Um, acknowledge the, the value of their contribution to the broader uh, work that we're doing to try to understand unit planning, for example, or something else about teachers. Uh, and um, there's tons of like sample thank you notes if you need some help or chat GPT is also really helpful with that too. Okay, so now it comes to reviewing the transcripts. So read through the transcript really carefully highlight key points and themes. So it's helpful if you um, like color code or make comments or annotate as you're reading, like things that stand out to you is really important. So do a quick read through and, and just react, react to the transcript and revisit that interview and notice the things that stand out to you as important, surprising or validating in some way. Um, and then you might go read through a second time and start kind of coding for some insights or significant themes. And coding is just another way of kind of like identifying or making some, some key phrases that connect to the things that you're noticing. Um, you might use headers or categories or colors to help you think about that. So if we look at the sample transcript from um, a qualitative study about thematic analysis this just you know think about it as a word document and then these are a bunch of comments you know like highlight it and say like this is a about well-being curriculum um so this you might have a, you're going to have a transcript about unit planning um so they have a lot of freedom or they don't have a lot of freedom or they think about what's what's age appropriate or they think about time um whatever the things that you're noticing you're just really just what you're noticing it seems kind of obvious but you want to notice the notice what you notice essentially and this is sort of what coding means or highlighting the transcript after you've kind of gone through the whole transcript and then once we start talking together about what we're noticing across all the different transcripts we can start doing what's called like sort of um, categorizing and, and uh, thematic clustering, you know, or analyzing to find patterns. So this is where they put um, themes in circles, sub themes in boxes, and then some like slight uh, connections and emphasis there too. This is something we're going to do as a class, but this is something you might do as a researcher once you have several transcripts that you're looking at to notice patterns across multiple transcripts that answer your research questions or what you're really trying to understand. Um, so for our purposes, we're going to do just a short little write up about our interview. Um, but I think it's really helpful for you to do this as a researcher as well, um, to spend some time after you code, code or categorize a transcript to do a little bit of like writing about what you're noticing, um, some processing of it. So for us, we're doing a little write up that's like one to two pages. We're gonna use headers and bullet points about the things that we notice, which might be our themes, which might be some of the key questions or key issues or concerns or noticings that we had. There's no really right way for this to look. <laughs> um, and so I think uh, you just need to do what makes sense for you, what's useful for you as a teacher. Because again, this interview is for us to understand the experiences of a practicing teacher and their unit planning experiences and how it's gonna benefit us as a teacher. That's our work. And for you, if you're doing research and have a different kind of question or topic, um, it's helpful to kind of just sit with this and say, how is this person's experiences helping me understand what's going on? Uh, what can I do with that information as well? And so it's helpful to write, do a little write-up. And here's just a sample write-up that's not related to our study. This is from a different um, sample interview report that you can see. And this is sort of rehashing the interview report. You know, So we met in the office and we started the interview and I asked these kinds of questions and here's sort of what I noticed. This doesn't have bullet points or headers. It can, I think that would be really useful too. But I just wanted to show you a little bit about like what a researcher might be noticing when they conduct an interview, um, even though it's not related to our project, but you can pause it and look at it. Okay, so a couple of reminders, like interviews really help researchers and teachers probe and understand 
um, participants' responses. So instead of doing a survey, we're doing an interview because you can ask follow-up questions. You can um, wonder, you can listen, you can see their facial expressions. Uh, all of these things help us understand the teacher's experiences. It's very humanizing and they can elaborate on things. Whereas a survey, you're just limited to what they say at that time. And you can't always ask follow-up questions in the moment unless you do follow-up interview. So this is a key advantage that you can ask follow-up interviews and you can clarify responses. So don't be afraid to do that. Take a stance of curiosity when you're doing the interviews and probe a little bit further if you're like, how exactly was that working or how did this happen? Um, and so for our class assignment, um, we had an email invitation, uh, we did the interview, we have a thank you note, we have an interview summary. Um, for us, we'd like it to be ready on September 16th so we can have a class conversation about what we're finding out across all of our interviews. Um, and then you're gonna prepare for that. But for you as a researcher, hopefully, <laughs> Uh, for you as a researcher um, and you as a, a future teacher who's doing this research, this interview research, um, we hope that you enjoy this time. It's like precious time with another human being that they're giving up their time to be with you to help you understand some issue or question that you're wondering about. So really appreciate that you get this privilege of witnessing their life and asking them these questions that probably no one else has ever asked them about before. And it's really a lovely experience. So I hope that you have enjoyed the interview and like understanding a little bit behind the scenes of preparing for an interview. So we'll see you next time.